sound like an Asian sweet treat, or it does to me, but it's actually Greek and it means dry cucumber. How funny is that? Hello my fellows, hope you're doing well. Thanks for stopping by and if you're new around here, my name is Grace and I love plants. Today I want to share with you some houseplants that deserve more love and attention. Some of these houseplants may be a little bit more common, but there are some in here that you may not have noticed or seen before. The indoor houseplant market seems to be dominated by aeroids and hoyas at the moment. And don't get me wrong, I love my philodendrons, anthuriums, and hoyas. However, I thought it'd be nice to talk about some other plants for a change, you know, mix it up a little. So in this video, I'm going to talk about five underrated houseplants in my opinion. And if you're interested to see what they are, then definitely keep on watching. But before we get started, I post videos every week, so make sure you're subscribed and ring the notification notification bell if you haven't already so you don't miss out on my future uploads. And without further ado, let's get into it. First up is this nerve plant or the Fetonia albivenis. These are quite common and considered basic, but I think they are absolutely beautiful and they deserve much more love than they are currently getting. I've got here the pink variety and this is actually quite a mature specimen. These ones here are the juvenile version and in time and with the right conditions, they will eventually grow to look something like this. And here I've got the white version. I find these to be quite fast growing and relatively easy care. The only thing is you need to keep on top of watering for these guys. They are known to be quite dramatic when they're underwatered because they will droop all the way down and get quite limp. However, if you give it a nice thorough watering, it will bounce back. What I really appreciate about the Fetonias is they are quite easy to find and they don't break the bank. Next underrated plant is the African Violet or the Streptocarpus eonathus. I believe that's how you say it. I'm only going to attempt it once. Let me know in the comments down below if I've pronounced it wrong or if you know how it's supposed to be pronounced. There are so many different varieties of African Violets. I don't even really know the names of the ones that I have in my collection. But um, yeah, I'm just going to show you and talk a little bit about why I think they're underrated. First things first, they are quite prolific bloomers. They are also enjoyed for their blooms. So they come in many different colors. I think I've seen purples, pinks, blues, and greens. I've also seen some with frilly leaves or variegated leaves. And yeah, I think these are absolutely beautiful and super underrated. In terms of care, these are really easy to care for. I just give it bright and direct light and bottom water it whenever I see the leaves start to droop or if I see the blooms start to crisp up, it's usually a really good sign that it needs a watering. They also don't cost very much and it's very easy to find them. I got this from a stall nearby my house and I think I got this for like $15 or something like that. And I've also got here another smaller or different variety that cost me five dollars or something like that. If you're a fan of fuzzy plants, definitely consider the African Violet. This one here isn't blooming at the moment, but it has a really nice purple flower. And I've also got another variety here that's not currently blooming. I believe this is called the China Doll, but I may be mistaken. Um, what I really like about it is the blooms that is blue and has a little white border around them. I really can't rave about the African Violet enough. They are prolific bloomers, they're so easy to care for, and they have got fuzzy foliage. Tick, tick, tick. Next up, we have the Deschidia russifolia, otherwise known as the Million Hearts plant. And they're called a Million Hearts because they look like little hearts on a strand. This one here is a regular green variety, but I've also got the variegated one, which I'll show you in a minute. But when you sun stress this plant, you can see the new growth actually comes out a little bit pink, which I think is super adorable. This one here is the variegated variety. It has a paler shade of green and has a white border around the edges. And you can also get some fully white leaves like this one here. These guys are actually quite underrated because I don't hear many people talk about them much and in a large lush pot they look absolutely spectacular. I find that these guys take a little while to get settled but once they do they are relatively fast growing. They can handle direct light and they can grow in indirect light and they don't really require too much watering because their leaves are quite succulent. They're super cute little plants and what's not to love? 
Next underrated plant I wanted to share with you guys is this guy right here. This is the Silver Dollar Vine. I'm not going to even attempt to pronounce the scientific name. I'll put it on screen. It might sound like an Asian sweet treat, or it does to me, but it's actually Greek and it means dry cucumber. How funny is that? When I first got into houseplants, I saw this plant on Clarissa's Instagram at Blushing Vines and absolutely fell in love with it. It's so unique looking with the round succulent leaves and it's also got a really crazy growth pattern which I find amusing. And in terms of care, I literally do nothing. I mean, I water it every once in a while, especially if I see new growth forming, but otherwise it's generally very low maintenance. Because it has succulent leaves, they don't really need too much watering and they can handle really high light and also low temperatures. This is a season grower, I believe. I can't tell if they sort of grow more in the warmer months or in the cooler months, but I find that it stays dormant for a pretty long time before it starts to put out any new growth. So if you're interested in this plant or maybe you already have one, you'll notice that it doesn't do anything for a really long time and all of a sudden when you least expect it, it'll put out a new growth that will just take off and grow like super quick. I've been capturing the growth progress for this one ever since I got it, so I'll insert some photos so you can see the sort of growth pattern that it has. It's such a strange looking plant, I don't really see anything else like it, and it definitely deserves more spotlight. The final plant that I wanted to talk about is this guy, and this is a tassel fern. This specific variety is the Upertia numularifolia, I believe that's how you pronounce it. So there are around about 400 different species in the tassel fern family, and they are just beautiful trailing plants. I only have one tassel fern in my collection, and that's this one here, which I absolutely love because of the flat leaves. The flat leaves are really unique looking and I think they're really quite beautiful because they look like little sequins. In my experience so far, these are quite easy care. I've heard that they can be a little bit tricky but I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. I don't really do much to it. I give it north facing light and water it about once a week. I also heard that these are humidity loving but I have mine in about 60% humidity and it seems to be doing quite alright. These aren't necessarily the easiest to find and because of that there is quite a price tag to it as well. But these are another underrated genus that definitely deserves more hype. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy these other videos, so click to check them out. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, stay mellow my fellows.